Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the Gauss-Jordan method, which is a, uh, a method for solving a system of linear equations using um, what's called an augmented matrix. Um, basically, it's taking the row echelon and Gaussian elimination methods that we've looked at, and you take it uh, even further. And when you do that, your solution is very obvious. Uh, to your system of equations. So here's how it works. You're going to start with a system of equations and we'll do this problem here. Uh, actually we're going to do it on the uh, Casio prism. Um, so you see your three equation system with x, y, z and your numbers over here. And you want to line them up properly. The x information in one column, y information, x column, z information and all your numbers to the right of the equal sign. If you had a bigger system, you'd have more variables, that's all. And then you're going to write them uh, in a matrix. And a matrix is basically this bracketed collection of numbers where the numbers are in a certain position. For instance, this is the first row. And you can see this would be the 2 in front of the x. So 2x plus 1y uh, minus z, 1z minus 1z equals 2. And the second equation was x plus 3y plus 2z equals 1. And the last equation was x plus y plus z equals 2. Okay, so that's what uh, we have here. This vertical line basically inside the matrix just separates um, the, the terms that have x with the terms that have no, or x, y, and z with the terms that have no variables. Okay, now, what we can do uh, is manipulate or transform this system of equations, this augmented matrix, in the same way we have been doing with our row operations. And those row operations are the same that we've been doing here. You can exchange any two rows. You can multiply any single row or equation. <clears throat> by any uh, non-zero real number. You can uh, multiply a row by some non-zero number and add or subtract it to some multiple of some other row to replace a row, just like we've been doing. So you're going to write each equation again so all the variable terms are in the same order on the left side of the equation, the constant parts without the variables or on the right side, you'll write that augmented matrix. Your goal is to do the following, and this is where you're going to see it's um, taking things further. What you're going to try to do is to uh, eliminate all these terms, basically, below this diagonal. So here's the diagonal on the left side of the vertical line inside the matrix. Ultimately, we would like all these a sub 1, 1, A sub 2, 2, A sub 3, 3, and so on, all these to become 1's. And we want everything else here to be zeroed out. And then we want everything above this diagonal to be zeroed out. Once we're able to do that with these row operations, then you're going to find that your first variable uh, is equal to whatever you have over here, C sub 1. Your second variable will be equal to c sub 2 and so on because you could write each of these equations and ultimately you have like 1x equals whatever because you eliminated the y's and z's and everything else in that equation. Your next equation will just have say y in it equal to something and so on. So that's our goal. So let's take the uh, problem that we have and we're going to put it into an augmented matrix and then go to work on it with the row operations. And we'll do that with the um, Casio prism. We will work with this system of equations here. And notice the coefficients in front of all the x, y's, and z's and the numbers to the right of the equal sign. Let's go to the Casio prism. Okay, after you turn your um, prism on, you're going to want to go to the run matrix menu number one and execute that. And then you'll see the options we have here. 
we'd like to use the matrix so that's underneath F3 here, the matrix, and we're going to use matrix A. So I'm going to hit execute on matrix A, and we're going to give it dimensions. Now, our dimensions will be we have three rows, <clears throat> so that's what the M part's here going to be, so let's put in a three, and N will be the number of columns. We'll have a column for the X's, a column for the Y's, a column for the Z's, and then a column for the constants to the right of the um, equal sign. So that will be four columns. So hit execute and hit execute again. And that sets up our matrix here. Now what, you'll, what you don't see, I mean you see the bracketed um, matrix symbols here. There's not a vertical line here, but go ahead and put in your coefficients for your first equation. So I have a 2 in front of the x, a 1 in front of the y, negative 1 in front of the z, a 2 for the constant. Just keep on going. Put in the second equation, which is going to have a 1, a 3, a 2, and a 1. And finally, the third equation, which is going to be a 1x plus 1y plus 1z, and that's equal to 2. Okay, so we'll stop right there. And now, there's various operations that you can do. You can see them here. There's row operations, um, and we're going to be using the things here underneath f sub 1. At any point in time after we're uh, manipulating things, you'll, you can actually write a, an equation for each row. Just use the coefficients. Column 1 is the x column. Column 2 is y. Column 3 is z. And your column 4 is all of your... Uh, constants to the right of the equal sign. So the first thing we'd like to do is to get rid of, say, this 1 here um, in the second row, first column. The way we would do that um, up to this point in time is we would have probably um, taken uh, twice row 2 minus row 1 to create our new row 2, and that would have eliminated this 1 and made it a 0. Well, uh, in order to do something along those lines here, we may have to adjust it slightly based on the operations we're allowed to do on the Casio. So I'm going to click on the Row Operation button here, and you'll see we can swap uh, rows. We can multiply a row by some number. This uh, third option here is you can multiply some row by a number and add it to uh, the row that we're interested in changing, which is row 2. So I'm going to click on on this. And before I click on F3, our strategy will be to, in this case, multiply row 1 by, say, negative 1 half, and then add it to row 2. So negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1, negative 1 x, and we'll add that to row 2, which is adding it to 1 x, and that will get rid of our x term in the second one. And then it will do it the whole way across for all the other um, variables and constants. So let's click on that, and it tells you what to do. You want to multiply row, uh, what, whatever row you want by this uh, constant. So I'm going to do negative 0.5 or negative 1 half, negative 0.5. Multiply row 1 by that, and we're going to add that to row 2. So it's, then we hit execute and F6, and you can see what it did. It changed everything in that row for us. It zeroed that out, which is good. Now what we want to do is to zero out this 1 that is in row 3, column 1. And we're going to do it exactly the same way, except... Uh, now, this time we have row 1 and row 3, so we'll multiply row 1 by negative 1 half and add it to row 3. So I'm going to use the F3 button here. So we're going to multiply by negative 0.5, row 1, and add that to row 3 to create our new row 3. And hit execute one more time here, and you can see that zeroed that out, which is really cool. All right. Now what we want to do, a good strategy, is to continue underneath this diagonal. Our diagonal right now is uh, this 2, 2.5, 1.5. 
and I want everything below that to be zero. So I've already zeroed out sort of the x terms here, and I want to zero out this uh, 0.5, which is associated with the y term. And I'm going to use row 2 to do that so I don't introduce any x's. I don't want to use row 1. That'll get x's back into play. In this case here, um, I can see that this 2.5 is 5 times bigger than 0.5. So what I can do here is multiply uh, row 2 by um, negative 1 fifth and add it to row 3 to create the new row 3. So here we go. I'm going to multiply by negative 1 fifth or negative 0 0.2. It's the same thing. Row 2 add that to row 3 and hit execute and you can see that's exactly what it did so now I've zeroed everything out here as a matter of fact that last row now if you look at it I have 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals 1 so z is equal to 1 you can see that for sure okay now what we'd like to do is to go up here and above the diagonal here's the diagonal I want to make this 1 a 0 eventually this negative 1 a 0 eventually and this 2.5 a 0 and then turn the 2, 2.5 into 1's. Okay, um, let me go ahead and turn, say, this 2.5, well, I'll work on the top ones here. I'm going to turn this, um, this 1 up here that's in row 1, uh, column 2, into a 0. And to do that, I'm going to use row 2 here. Um, and I can see that 2, 2.5 is 2.5 times larger than 1 and they need the opposite sign so I'm going to hit the F3 button I'm going to multiply row 2 by negative 1 divided by 2.5 it'll handle that and I'm going to do, multiply row 2 by that and add that to row 1 to create my new row 1 and you can see that zeroed all that out there. So now I have two more things to zero out. I'm going to zero out this negative 2 up here by using row 3 because that will not introduce any more y's back into the game. So I'm going to notice that there are opposite signs, negative and positive. So if I multiply row 3 by 2 and then add it to row 1, I should be okay. So go to F3, multiply uh, by 2 in row 3 and add that to row 1. And you can see that zeroed that out very nicely. I'm going to zero out this 2.5 here in the second row. And again, I'm going to use row 3 for that. And I need to multiply row 3 by uh, negative 2.5. So negative 2.5 multiply by row 3 and add that to my row 2 to create my new row 2. And you can see that zeroed that out. Now the only thing I need to do next and then I'll have my solutions is to turn this 2 and this 2.5 into 1's. So let's do that. I'm going to multiply row 1 by 1 half and that'll turn this into a 1. So you do that. I'm going to use the F2 button because I'm only multiplying a single row by something. So I'm going to multiply it by one half or one divided by two. And this is going to occur in row one to create my new row one. And you can see that we have that. And I'm going to multiply row two by uh, one divided by 2.5. So let me do that. One divided by 2.5. I'm doing that to row 2 to create the new row 2. And notice that we are in great shape. I've got 1's down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else, and look at my solutions are right here on the right. In the first equation, I have 1x is equal to 2. In the second equation or second row, I got 1y equals negative 1. And in the third equation, I have 1z equals 1. So x is 2, y is negative 1 and z is 1. That's my solution using the Gauss-Jordan uh, method.